you do that first, then you can uh, carry on with this uh, video. Hello guys, uh, thanks for dropping in and hello if it's your first time. My name's Rick and uh, welcome to my channel. Um, in this little clip, I'm gonna be talking about cruise control. Um, this bike, the 2021 KTM Super Adventure S, has standard cruise control or adaptive cruise control. Um, obviously, the standard cruise control is one of those where you just turn it on or off and you adjust the speed with the plus and minus uh, adjusters on the control unit. Uh, nothing automatic about it. Um, however, the adaptive cruise control um, uses the uh, Bosch radar at the front of the bike uh, that sits beneath the headlight. And um, it's, you can have many different settings on it, um, but I'll go through that later. Uh, but in short, it just matches the speed of the vehicle in front, uh, whether it slows down or speeds up, and it will maintain the distance set and the speed that you've set accordingly. Um, it's a very relaxed way of uh, traveling on long journeys on highways or motorways. Um, it's not a gimmick. I thought it was you know, a bit much on a motorcycle. I mean, I was fine with the standard cruise control on my last bike, but um, this adaptive cruise control is such a breeze to use. Um, it's very practical. As I've said in my um, Super Adventure bike review, which is a separate video, uh, this one's just going to be purely about the adaptive cruise control. Um, I'm traveling 180 miles later today from um, Stoke-on-Trent, which is up north, well, in the Midlands, but everyone calls it up north, but it is in the Midlands of the UK, down to uh, London. And um, hopefully with my new mic, you'll be able to hear me and I'll demonstrate the, uh, the actual use of the adaptive cruise control. Um, and hopefully you find it a bit helpful. Right, this here, this is the radar. Um, this is what controls and manages the uh, adaptive cruise control on the bike, um, which the Super Adventure R doesn't have. Um, but anyway, let's carry on. Right, to access the cruise control settings, click across once to the right, and I believe it's four times down, so you, you get to get to this icon here. So one, two, three, four. Okay, cruise control. Now in the cruise control settings, if you click across right, you can scroll through the different modes. Okay, so there's ACC Sport, ACC Comfort, and ACC Only. CC Only means cruise control only. This is the standard one where you turn it on or off or adjust the speed by yourself. It does not use the radar. Now if I choose ACC Sport, this is adaptive cruise control. And the Sport means that it will decelerate quicker and accelerate quicker to the set speed or from the set speed uh, or basically from the obstacle in front uh, so a bit more late braking essentially on the sport setting and harder acceleration up to the set uh, cruising speed adaptive cruise control comfort this means it will start applying the brakes sooner so you gradually slow down before reaching the uh, set distance to the car in front. And if you're overtaking or the, there is no vehicle in front, it will accelerate gradually up to the set cruising speed. So essentially, cruise control only, adaptive cruise control, bit quicker slowing down, a bit quicker speeding up, and adaptive cruise control, bit slower at slowing down, sorry, a bit, yeah, a bit slower at slowing down and a bit slower at speeding up. Now, if we go down to adaptive cruise control distance, here, it's very easy to see on the screen that this sets your comfort level as to how close you'd like to be from the vehicle in front before the uh, cruise control starts uh, keeping you the set distance. So I keep mine on very short. That picture on the screen is not a, an example of, in real life, how close you are. Um, I'd say it's probably a good seven car lengths or five car lengths away on very short. But yeah, you get the options, it's very short short middle long very long uh, i find everything apart from short and very short but very short and short are the main ones i use because the uh, the other ones just leave too big a distance in front and cars just end up overtaking you and pulling in in front of you which is quite dangerous um, but you have to play about on it um, and again 
you wouldn't want to but these screens are accessible on the fly while you're traveling but to be honest find your comfort setting and just leave it right here we are demonstrating the adaptive cruise control uh, just going down the dual carriageway and uh, to turn on the adaptive cruise control you press that button and an icon appears on the display it's yellow it means it's ready but not on you need to determine the speed and press the button on the lower left of the switch switch gear that one once you press that you set the speed and the icon turns green as you can see the speed is currently set to 73 and it's tracking the car in front no hands on the throttle um, you can see the speedo is dropping down to 69 uh, it's going up to 70 dropping down to 69 now 68 it's controlling the speed behind the vehicle in front now let's just demonstrate by increasing the cruising speed up to 80 miles an hour or 81 it's still following the car in front yep it's not accelerating now as soon as i hit the indicator to go into the empty lane the bike automatically is accelerating up to the set cruising speed my hand is not on the throttle whatsoever and if i indicate left to come back into the lane it'll accelerate up to the car in front and then match the speed once again can you see it? speed decreasing absolutely fantastic completely effortless so i'll now move into the fast lane or the outside lane again the bike starts accelerating up to 81 which is the set cruising speed and then i'll just pull in once again and it just enjoy the ride essentially um, you can see the wagon coming up ahead um, i'm still at my own cruising speed now the bike started to decelerate it can sense it's there see it's slowly decreasing there we go and then now it's just going to match the speed in front it will also apply braking but not not too intense um, and now i've indicated out it's just going to accelerate again back up to the set cruising speed and you can do this all day long i mean there is literally not much effort into it whatsoever fantastic what more do you want well guys i uh, hope you enjoyed that little clip uh, whether you found it helpful or not but um i've got some good stuff coming up um for those of you who haven't subscribed maybe you're interested um i'm getting the uh, bike um, booked in on the dyno um with a full uh comparison test so i've got it in three times uh, it's going to be dynoed with the oem exhaust um, on uh, dynoed with the acropovic with the db killers in and also dynoed with the acropovic with the db killers out um, i will base the test on a full tank of shell v power because i just want to see the maximum uh, performance possible um, without any you know straight through uh, decatting all it is is a uh, full dyno with the comparisons on the uh, exhausts i've just mentioned um, without the db killers on the acropovic etc um, that's booked in in a couple of weeks time um, i'm really interested to see how close the performance is um, per the book spec which the claimed bhp is 158 horsepower i believe anyway we'll see when we get the results um, all being well anyway so that's booked in in you know a couple of weeks time um, so if you're interested subscribe it'll get sent straight to your phone tablet um blah 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 and for those of you who already subscribed well you'll you'll get the uh, notification no doubt um i got a few other things in line as well but um, they're just taking time to do it these days because my work patterns changed so um yeah i'm back in work as well as at home but well, i'm in london now at the moment so i haven't got my workshop okay Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that clip and I hope to catch up with you guys again soon. Thanks a lot.